Well, Radhika, thank you very much. Um, I believe the introduction is, uh, is, is, is too long, too many ancient details. Um, anyway, I uh, really thank you for having done a great job summarizing the report and uh, some of its key findings. So it doesn't uh, uh, really uh, allow me to uh, discuss uh, a lot of things that I originally planned to uh, to discuss. Maybe we'll, um, uh, uh, things will come up, come up during the question and answer period. Let me provide a few uh, fairly broad comments on your presentation. Let me regard your presentation as the as the first uh, presentation of this webinar. Well, first of all, uh, the world majority, as we discussed when you were in Moscow at the uh, Higher School of Economics uh, annual conference, uh, the term world majority or the notion of world majority is something that was born um, within the walls of the higher school of economics. Uh, we uh, struggled a bit with how to um, define the countries that uh, did not join the United States and its, uh, and its allies in the um, uh, anti-Russian sanctions campaign in the proxy war that's going on in Ukraine. And there were all sorts of suggestions, uh, globals, the global south, the global southeast, uh, uh, the wider east or something like that. Uh, the notion that won most of the, of the votes, if you like, around the table was this notion of world majority because uh, this is not a geographical term. Uh, this refers to countries that refuse to submit to the hegemony of one power, to the notion that there's only one civilization in the world and one true civilization in the world, and that's Western civilization. And all other civilizations need to be subsumed within a global West and within some sort of a global West. So world majority refers to a lot of countries in Asia, a lot of countries in, in Africa, Latin America, but some countries, potentially some countries elsewhere, including in Europe, could join the world majority uh, when they uh, decide that uh, their national sovereignty matters, that their national identity, their cultural uh, civilizational identity matters. So this is not um, a rival to the global South term. The global South is more of a socioeconomic phenomenon. Uh, that's how it's been used. And uh, th th there's nothing that we hold against that. But uh, world majority is more political. And uh, again, being very frank, this is the world seen from the vantage point of Moscow. Uh, this is something that we were working on a report that uh, uh, would be useful to Russian foreign policy makers. Uh, we were not doing some academic job. We were not uh, proposing, you know, um, some sort of a global term to be universally accepted. We had a very focused concept, and that's that's what we came up with. Um, and let me uh, underline what you, I think, repeated a couple of times. I think this is very important. Let me let me add my own, uh, uh, you know, plowing the same ground. Uh, Russia has experienced a revolution in its, or is experiencing, because this is this is far from complete, a revolution in its foreign policy. Um, um, conceptualizing and its foreign policy making that we haven't seen uh, in our lifetime. And actually, it's not just the last, uh, let's say, 35 years or 40 years uh, that is being revised and fundamentally rethought. Uh, this is uh, something that changes a lot of perceptions with which 
Russian foreign policy operated since the days of Peter the Great. So we're talking about something really, really fundamental. Uh, you noted another uh, key uh, um, position that the report takes about uh, the two worlds of Russian foreign policy as, as we define them. Uh, there's, uh, if you like, the world of, uh, of war and the world of peace and cooperation and partnership. We were not dealing with the, with the former. And this is not, in our view, this is not where Russia's foreign policy will be most active, at least not where Russian diplomacy is going to be very active in the foreseeable future. This is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the terrain that is being uh, uh, negotiated uh, by the militaries on both sides, by other uh, forces that are um, uh, that are that, that that are opposing each other in this uh, proxy war between Russia and the West, that has uh, unfortunately a potential of becoming a real war. And I think that since the the report was published, we've moved uh, substantially closer to a real war between Russia and NATO. Uh, than uh, where we were, let's say, a year ago. Um, you mentioned that uh, uh, we did not spend much time thinking about ways to normalize relations with the West. Um, there's a very simple reason why that's the case. Uh, there's no norm at this point. We will not be going back to any of the former models of Russian Western relations. These models are all, um, let's say, are all history. And new norms will have to be, uh, will have to be fought over, will have to be won, will have to be accepted as a result of this um, monumental struggle. I've, excuse my highfalutin rhetoric, that's going on between Russia and the West. It's it's truly existential for Russia. It's important for the West, not as not existential in my view, but still important. That norm uh, needs to be forged in that uh, uh, in that in in that struggle. But the report is uh, focused on the positive side of Russian foreign policy, and uh, there, there is a fact, a sad fact that. Um, Throughout its, uh, certainly throughout the, uh, the, the post-Soviet period, and I would say even before that, uh, Russia's foreign policy was uh, so heavily focused, heavily concentrated on relations with the West, essentially Western Europe and North America. Um, and uh, it neglected um, the uh, relations with uh, uh, with countries of Asia and, uh, and Latin America and the Middle East and Africa and, uh, and, and others in the non-Western world. And uh, this uh, break in relations with the West that was initiated by, uh, by, by Western countries, I should say, pushed Russia, which uh, in my view did not really feel uh, very happy about that initially, pushed Russia to face up to the um, to the opportunities that existed in the East, because all opportunities in the West were foreclosed as a result of the uh, of the of the Western response to uh, the Russian operation in in Ukraine. Um, but uh, relations with the world majority are not primarily, and certainly not not only about. Uh, compensating for the opportunities lost in the West. Um, they are about building, again, high sounding phrase, but building elements of a new world order. I think that Russia, Russian leaders and Russian uh, elites, if I may use the term, let, let me put, put it differently, Russian foreign and security policy community has come to the, uh, to the conclusion that uh, the current Western dominated structure of the world uh, could not be improved, that the West will not see the, 
uh, authority, power will not will not be on equal terms with the rest of the world. The United States, for that matter, uh, does not see, and I don't think it will see, any other country as its peer. Uh, the, it, it's, it has the, the problem of not being able to treat other countries as equals. So that, that's a very big problem of U.S. foreign policy, which I think will be aggravated as, uh, as time goes on and other countries become more powerful, because this is, it's, it's something that is in the genes, I would say, of, of, of uh, certainly post-World War II uh, U.S. Uh, foreign policy. Uh, but Russia... Uh, within the uh, the fora that you mentioned, uh, whether it's BRICS or SCO or other fora, should start building elements of a new world order. Russia should not think, and this is what, what we're making very clear. They should not think that that uh, the the world majority is potentially some sort of an anti anti Western bloc. This is this is not even wishful thinking. This is totally. Uh, total nonsense. Uh, all countries have their national interests. All, a lot of countries depend on the West. There are very few countries that uh, uh, that would oppose the United States crossing path of the U.S. as a as a terrible price for countries to 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 uh, to pay. And not, I mean, most countries would would not think of 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 uh, would not consider that as 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 an option for them, but. Uh, in parallel to the existing world order, uh, there can be and there are elements that would allow the countries uh, in, in the non-West, countries in the world majority group, to build the relations, let's say, in the financial field and the field of international standards, the logistics and in, in information system, what have you, price setting on certain commodities that would be independent of the dominance of the United States and its and its international instruments. So those things uh, for Russia, this is uh, uh, this is a necessity. Uh, for other countries, this is a potential future necessity that's becoming more and more likely. So this is something that uh, uh, that the, uh, that that forms the uh, the uh, perhaps the most important uh, axis of Russia's uh, uh, foreign policy uh, landscape uh, 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 directed at the world majority. I don't want to spend too much time, but let me finish on saying that uh, this is, uh, among other things, um, an attempt, uh, I'm talking about this report, an attempt to win a portion of intellectual independence, intellectual uh, identity, not simply using Western constructs and trying to, uh, to um, refashion them for our needs. Uh, we're trying to create a new picture of the world in our heads uh, and compare that to what others in the world majority group uh, coming up with, and uh, certainly ideas in China and in India and in the Arab world and Iran, in, in, in many other countries. Uh, and uh, that would help us, I think, um, build uh, the elements of, of a new uh, world order uh, that, would, uh, that would be uh, appropriate for the emerging world built around uh, several major civilizations and dozens of uh, uh, independent, autonomous, and above all, sovereign nations. So let me stop here and uh, thank you again for the opportunity. Th thanks very much, Dimitri. But before we, we go on to the next speaker, may I ask you to reflect a little bit on how the report's been received uh, in the public, in, uh, from, from the government, et cetera. If you have any thoughts to add on that, perhaps you might. Well, um, it's it's interesting that uh, the, the term that we coined at the higher school of economics was uh, picked up not only by the people with whom we uh, discussed the report, the foreign ministry people, but um, uh, essentially by the uh, by the national leaders. 
And uh, President Putin has uh, been using this um, notion of a world majority uh, very frequently uh, in the uh, in the last few months. So it's become an accepted term in Russia. And this is very important because this we, we were in the business of of making uh, intellectual frames for for uh, for discussion, for policy making, for conceptualizing. And this is very maybe this is the most important achievement so far of the report that the notion of world majority, that the ideas that were uh, put into this report are being received by those who are charged with Russian foreign policy making and by, uh, and essentially by the person who is uh, entrusted with uh, actually being responsible for, for Russia's foreign policy setting, and that's, that's the president of the country. Uh, the fact that uh, the report was uh, uh, posted on the website of the uh, of the foreign ministry is another indicator of uh, how it was received. Again, it was not panned by MFA officials. It was panned by a group of uh, intellectuals who were uh, who were acting uh, as uh, as part of this task force. Uh, they discussed things with uh, the MFA people, but essentially, it is not a product of the MFA. It's a product of of that group of of, of Russian experts. I'm Michael Hudson. I'm appearing here for the International Manifesto Group. If you like this video and want to like it, please subscribe. For more information, go to the address on this screen.